Do you need to make a custom template for the TechDraw workbench? Stick around to find out how to make one. Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm here to help you learn FreeCAD so that you can design and make the things that you've imagined. The TechDraw workbench comes with a number of standard templates that you can use in your work. But what happens if you want to make a custom one? Well, you can modify an existing one, or you can create a new one. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create a new one. I'm going to show you how you can make an A5 template for the TechDraw workbench. I realize that an A5 template is not too practical, but the techniques that I'm going to show you will allow you to make a template that meets your exact needs. As part of this demonstration, I'm just going to create a simple model which we can use in a tech draw drawing, and then we're going to apply the template that we built to it to show you how it works. Now let's get started. I'm using FreeCAD version 0.19, built on the 4th of December 2021 for this demonstration, and I'm using it on Kubuntu Linux 20.04. So I'm just going to create a simple cylinder part that we can use. So create the body and the sketch. It's just going to be on the XY plane. Just going to create a cylinder that has a diameter of 30 millimeters. Pad that out and it's going to be a 30 millimeter high one as well. Then I'm just going to create a tech drawing using my standard template and insert the cylinder into it. Now let's look at what's involved in creating a new template. I have to use a separate piece of software to create the template because FreeCAD doesn't really have the ability to do so. You're going to need a piece of software that allows you to create and edit SVG files, which are a form of XML files. I'm going to use Inkscape to do this because it allows me to create SVG files and also to edit the XML that's in. Inkscape is available on Windows, Mac and Linux, and there is a link in the description to the Inkscape website where you can download the software. I'm using Inkscape version 1.1.1 on Linux for this demonstration. So we're making an A4 portrait template, so I need to change the size of the document. And to do that, we needed to use the document properties tool, which is under the file menu. And it's going to be 148.5 millimeters wide and 210 millimeters high. And I'm going to zoom in to fit the page so we can see it better. The standard FreeCAD templates all have a border around them. So I'm going to add one as well. Just going to draw a rectangle. And then I'm going to select it. I'm going to make the border fit six millimeters in on every edge. And then I'm just going to draw some rectangles that represent the title of the drawing, the date it was drawn, the scale, and the revision number. And then I'm going to join them all together to make them the same size, etc. For the purposes of this video, it doesn't really matter how big they are. And now I'm going to add the editable text items. So, title, date, scale revision and I'm going to align them all together so they're in a straight line oops when I select them all and we use the alignment tool for that align align relative to first selected and I'm going to insert a PNG file that represents my logo Put that in the bottom, oops, put that in the bottom corner. Now if we save the template, I'm going to call it A5 Portrait New. And what I've done is I've created a template that can be used in FreeCAD, but it doesn't have any smarts. What I mean by that is it cannot be edited in FreeCAD. So if we come across to our drawing and we change the template to the one I just created, you'll see that it has 
all the text items, but there are no green boxes representing editable text items. So we need to go on back into Inkscape to fix that. Now in Inkscape, what I need to do is use the XML editor to do this. So I'm going to open it by pulling down the edit menu and going to the XML editor. And you can see the XML editor is in two parts. The top part represents the drawing as a whole, and each line is a single tag or element of that drawing. And the bottom section has the attributes attached to each element. So the top level element describes the whole of the drawing. The other elements in here contain the graphical elements that are displayed on the screen. Now you can see we've got several rectangles, and as I click on them, you can see them being identified in Inkscape. And they have various attributes. In the case of the text attributes, you can change the style or its location, that sort of thing through the attributes and to make it editable we are going to add another attribute and that attribute is called freecad colon editable and i typically set its value to be the name of the field that i'm entering so on the title field i've now made it editable by adding the freecad editable attribute and i've just put it placed its name as title if i come down to the date i'm going to add an attribute to make it editable And I will usually put this as being the format that I want the date displayed in. And I'll just repeat that with all the rest. And I'm going to add another text item, which represents the author. And I'm going to ro rotate it 90 degrees, because we'll talk about that in a little while. And I'm also going to make it editable. Now, if I save that and we go back to FreeCAD and we change template, so the TechDraw Workbench doesn't allow you to update a template in place. So you need to switch to a different template and then switch back to the one you've just updated. And you can see that after putting that in, nothing has happened as far as TechDraw Workbench is concerned. And that's because I deliberately left something out just to show you what would happen if you had those attributes on there, but you missed this one thing. If you're creating a template from scratch, you must have this one thing that's missing. And now I'll show you how to add that. So we go back to Inkscape. We'll come up to the SVG element right at the top. And we're going to add an attribute there. And that attribute is called XMLNS colon FreeCAD. And its value is a URL that tells TechDraw Workbench what it needs to do. So we'll add that, we'll save it, and we'll go back to FreeCAD. Again, we've got to switch the template. And now you can see that some of them have got the green tags on there. That means that we must have missed the tags on some of the other text items. So we'll go back into Inkscape and we will check them. So we click on scale and yes, it doesn't have one. Not quite sure why, because I said I added it, but maybe I didn't save it properly. Now make sure you don't just tab off from one to the other because I think that's probably where I missed them. And you can see that with author, there isn't a green box, but sharp eyed viewers will spot that there is a green box off to the left. If I click on that, it'll allow me to edit the author field. But it's not very intuitive to have it out there. And again, if you zoom in on the drawing, that disappears. So it would appear as though you can't actually edit it. What I think is happening is that the tech draw workbench is not able to deal with the transform correctly. And so when it's placing the box, it's getting a little bit confused and puts it out to the side. For the moment, at least, I would suggest that you don't put any editable text in a vertical orientation. That might change in the future though, so it's something that's worth keeping an eye on. Now, because the template is also designed in Inkscape and is an SVG file, you actually have quite a bit of control over the display of the elements inside that template. So we can go back into Inkscape, and I think what we might do is we'll just change the outer border so that its color is blue. And to do that, you use the fill and stroke tool, and we change the stroke paint color to be blue. And if we really wanted to, we could change the style and we might make that just dashes. Then when we save it and we come back into FreeCAD and update the template, you will see that the border has changed and is now blue and dashed. So you have a fair bit of control over what you can actually put in here. It's probably worthwhile having a look and seeing how you can adapt it to suit your needs. You could get quite fancy, I think. I'm quite happy using the templates that I have that are slightly customized, but for those that have got a far more graphic design background than I do, you could come up with some quite interesting templates for use with the Tech Draw Workbench. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel financially, you can do so by buying me a cup of coffee through the link in the description below. Thank you very much for your support and we'll see you in the next one.